name is Jennifer Pierre. I'm a nurse practitioner student at Maryville University, and I'm doing my ears, eyes, ears, nose, and throat um, assessment today. This is my ID. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we get started, we're going to do a 360 of the room. Thank you. Okay. This is my patient today. And um, like I said, I'm going to do an um, assessment on your eyes, ears, nose, and throat. The first thing that we're going to do is check your um, optic nerve, um, and that's cranial nerve number two. And we're going to check your visual, visual acuity. Okay. And what I'm going to have you do is cover your right eye first. And you just read the line that you need. D-C-F-T-O-Y-D-C. -E okay. Your next... Um, D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Thank you. Let's go. All right, so what we're going to do is just check your um, eyes, and we're going to check for orbital edema around your eyes, um, check the sclera and the, um, the conjunctiva and everything for any drainage in your um, pupils. Make sure that they're um, equal. Um, looking at the eyebrows, looking at the hair distribution, it's fine, and making sure it's um, extended to the um, to the um, temporal canthus, which it is. I'm just going to pull your eyelids down a little bit and check the conjunctiva, okay? And I don't see any um, pterygium or anything like that or any foreign bodies in the eye. Um, and that that's, you know, looks good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is check the um, lacrimal apparatus. I'm just going to depress here, making sure that that gets raised up a little bit. All right, I'm going to check the um, ocular muscles next, the extraocular muscles, by first checking the um, light reflex, the pupillary light reflex with the pen light. Okay, I'm just going to have you look straight ahead. Okay, next I'm going to check for accommodation. Look straight ahead for me. Okay, good. Um, next thing I'm going to do is check for um, the red reflex with the eyes, with the ophthalmoscope. scope. Okay, if you look straight ahead, and that is perfect. Perfect. And I'm going to take a look at his optic disc next. Okay. And we're going to come in really close. Good. It looks like the arteries and veins are moving away from the optic disc. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Ready for me to check the next one? Okay. That one looks good too. Arteries and veins are moving away. The optic disc looks like it um, has um, the edges are well defined. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually go back to the extraocular muscles, and I'm going to check his. Um, the six cardinal fields of gaze as well, okay, and that's also checking the extraocular muscles. So I'm gonna have you look at the pen light, and I just want you to follow the pen light with your eyes and keep your head still, okay? Okay, great, and that's like I said, checking the extraocular muscles as well as the um, pupillary response. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is his um, ears, the oracles of his ears, making sure that they're um, like kind of looking at that imaginary line, making sure they're lining up with the inner canthus of the eye, um, and that's fine, making sure that there's no lesions or drainage or any um, nodules or anything that shouldn't be on the eye there. Um, I'm going to take a look inside of the ear. That shouldn't be on, in, on the ear. I said the eye on the ear. We're going to look inside of the ear and look at the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is nice and pearly gray. Some earwax. And I see the cone of light there. Okay, the earwax is obscuring um, the um, my layer marks on that side, the um, handle of malleus and the on this. Okay, let's do this one. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, this one, the tympanic membrane is pearly gray. And I do see the handle of malleus in the others. And the cone of light is there, a little obscured by some earwax, but it is um, present. Um, 
Here's what's good. We're gonna do the hearing test. We're gonna do the Weber test first. Okay, and just let me know when you can hear this. If you can hear the sound in both ears or one ear. This ear. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is have you occlude your left ear and tell me what ear you hear it in the best. Yes, okay. And the reason I had him occlude his left ear is just to check the reliability of the test. The next test is gonna be the Rene test. It's gonna check bone air, um, compare bone conduction to air conduction. I'm going to do it in your right ear first. You just let me know when you stop hearing the sound. Then I'm going to hold it next to your ear. You let me know when you stop hearing that sound. Good. And that was normal because the air conduction was longer than the bone conduction. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this here, the left ear. Okay, good. The air conduction was longer also in that one than the bone conduction, which is normal. The next test we're going to do is the whisper test. I'm going to have you occlude your left ear, and I'm going to whisper some um, colors and um, numbers to you. You're just going to repeat after me. 10? 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. Okay, occlude your right ear. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Okay, good. Um, and it looks like his hearing is... Um, Pretty good, it's intact. We're next going to um, look at his um, nose and the nose is midline. Um, and it's the, as far as the color, it's the same color as the rest of his um, facial features. Um, we're just gonna feel the nose, it's nice and firm. No tenderness there. Feel the um, frontal, frontal sinus. No tenderness, we're just checking for tenderness and swelling. Ethmoid and sphenoid sinus and then the maxillary sinus. And there's no tenderness or swelling noted there either. Um, the, it looks like the septum is midline. Um, I'm just going to check for patency of the nares. Okay, and they're patent. And we're going to um, let's just take a look at the internal nose. I'm going to tilt your head back just a little bit. And we're going to just look at those terminants, the inferior terminant there, which is visible, nice and pink and moist. Um, no parent drainage or anything that shouldn't be in there. Okay, and the inferior turbinate there, nares are nice and patent, um, which is good, okay? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at your lips. They're nice and pink. We don't want any um, pallor because that would be a sign of central cyanosis. I'm going to um, take a look at your mouth next, okay? And <clears throat> take a look at your tongue and your um, uvula. So you can open your mouth. I say ah. ah. So his uvula is midline. I see the back of his pharynx, which is nice and pink and moist. The tonsillary pillars, which are there, they don't have any exudate or anything abnormal. I'm open your mouth again. We're just going to check his buccal mucosa, which is nice and pink and moist as well. If, if you stick your tongue out and move from side to side for me. With this, I'm just checking cranial nerve number 12, which is the um, hypoglossal um, nerve and he, he's moving his tongue fine and everything. Okay, open your mouth again. I'm just checking his gums for color. It's nice and pink, okay, and moist. All right, the next thing that we're gonna um, look at is the gag reflex, and that's cranial nerve number 10, and cranial nerve number nine, which is the um, vagus nerve and the um, glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, I'm gonna have you open your mouth and say ah. Okay, and that's the gag reflex. So those um, cranial nerves are intact. And um, that is going to be the end of my um, eyes, ears, nose, and throat assessment, and thank you for watching.